When you're organizing your house, I'm sure you've heard group things by category, but what does that really mean? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down pretty much every single category in your entire home. Why is this important? Well, when you start grouping things into categories, you're going to be able to only keep the things you need, use, and find special. And you are going to be able to limit the amount of extra things you're bringing into your house because you have them grouped in this particular manner. You might have some of these categories inside your house and some of them you might not. I'm just giving you pretty much everything I have seen over the past eight years going into people's houses and now doing virtual organizing. So who am I? I'm Jessica, The Organized Mama, and I help families with organizing tips, tricks, and tutorials everyone can follow. For almost nine years now, I have been supporting families through organizational tutorials, in-home organizing, and virtual organizing. So all of these categories that I see are things that I know at least one person has in their home. I suggest organizing by room. It really helps you kind of stay focused. A lot of us either procrastinate or we find it really hard to focus when we're jumping around from room to room. So by having those four walls be your like boundary, it really helps keep you organizing through the entire process, which is the goal. The goal is not to just bounce around. The goal is to actually organize. So typically for every organizing project, I say start with a room. I typically recommend the bedroom first because there's so much research out there about sleep and your environment where you sleep. So we're gonna start with categories in the bedroom. So when you're starting, first you group everything together by category. So what does that even mean? Well, you can break it down like really intense or you can just have it be general. And what I mean by that is you can have clothes. That could be one entire category or you can have tank tops and that can be your one category. You can have everything in my closet or you could have just work attire. All of those things are categories, but it's how you look at the category that makes it more efficient and effective for you in your home. Typically in a bedroom, you'll find clothes with lots of subcategories underneath it. You will find books. You can find mementos, sentimental items, jewelry, belts, accessories, perfumes. Some people in their bedroom have makeup, workout gear, workout equipment. I have all the subcategories along with some additional categories on the blog, so make sure to check that out below where you're watching this video. Okay, so you have the categories for the bedroom. You have um, clothing and makeup and mementos and books and all of those things are in your bedroom. So when you start to declutter and go through everything in your bedroom, you're going to group those things by those particular categories. So next, people usually want to go into the bathroom because if you're working on your primary bedroom, typically your primary bathroom is the next logical step. Also helps you get ready in the morning. So going through your bathroom is also a really great thing to do next. Now, some categories in the bathroom. I'm going to be totally honest. There are a lot because it depends on what you actually store in your bathroom. So a couple of ideas of things that you store in your bathroom, makeup, toiletries, facial, hair, lady items, shaving, shower, hair care, uh, hair tools, all of those things that you have can be grouped just based on how you use them. There is no good or bad way to group items. My recommendation is to group them how you use them. I had one in-home client that we ended up 
grouping all of her hair care products together. Now she didn't use all of them at the same time, but we stored them all together so that she could see everything she had in one fell swoop. She had a corner cabinet, so we used some round turntable Lazy Susan things so she could see everything. And then the extra products of the ones that she was currently using were stored on the side. This way, even though she doesn't use all of the things all the time, she had storage for all of those products and she could easily glance at what she had. Now, I had another client who was a hairdresser, so she, her products were, she had so many. So we ended up grouping them based on the day that she used them because she didn't, she used different products for different days and different types of things. So we grouped them based on how she used them. So it depends on you and what works for you. So maybe you want all hair care products together. Maybe you want them based on how you use them. If you style your hair curly, all curly hair products are together. If you straighten your hair, all hair straightening products go together. Maybe your dry shampoos and other, you know, hair maintenance products can all be stored together as well. Maybe you just store everything, it, including your hair products or tools, and maybe you store your hair tools with your hair care products. It just works when it makes sense to you. So don't overthink it and maybe just keep the category really general by calling it hair. In the kitchen, there are so many different categories. So I'm gonna give you some general categories in this. If you want more in depth, make sure to check out the blog. So in the kitchen, we usually have large appliances. Those are things like your crock pots, your rice makers, your air fryers, then you have small kitchen gadgets, which are things like your immersion blender or your grater. Those things take up a little more space, don't totally fit in a drawer with kitchen utensils, but they still are a category that you need to think about where you're going to store them. Also, you have the obvious category, silverware plates, cups, water bottles, bowls. Those are obvious categories, but you also have baking, you have pantry items, which you can easily break down into a load of other categories. I suggest paying attention when you're walking around the supermarket, see how things are grouped that way, and then organize your pantry similar to how they're grouped at the grocery store. There are also spices. You have extra stuff that you know might not fit. Mixing bowls, pots and pans. All of those different categories are in your kitchen. And if you just group the things together based on how you cook, how you use your kitchen, how you bake, then it'll make setting up your kitchen much easier because you have specific contained spaces for everything. Now, I usually do kitchen and dining room together because a lot of things can be stored near each other, by each other, that kind of thing. So with the dining room, you usually have serving plates, serving platters, china, um, teacups. Maybe you have, you know, cloth napkins, tablecloths, all of those things stored together or apart based on how you use them. For us, we use our fine china. That's our everyday plates. They can go in the dishwasher, they are amazing for all of that. And we use some of our serving platters as trays to kind of contain things around the house. This way, everything is being used and is very thoughtful. I had a virtual client recently who had so many serving platters, had five sets of fine china, two from her grandparents, two from her husband's grandparents. She didn't know what to do with all of them. They only used one set and it was a grandparent set that they loved because it, they actually could put it in the dishwasher. So they ended up using that as their main set. And then the rest, they saved a couple of pieces, gave the rest to family, donated it. But now they are using their items far more because they were really thoughtful about their china. So just a total aside on fine china, because I know it takes up a lot of space in your dining room. So maybe think about how else you can show display 
or appreciate that without storing it, you know, in a bag in the basement. The office. Okay, there are so many categories in the office because there's so much stuff that has to be stored there. So we have the obvious paper. Um, you also have office supplies. You might have, you know, tech gear, batteries, cords. All of those different things need places to be stored in the office. So you can get like really specific with how you store them or you can just store them grouped together based on when you grab things. Um, quite a few years ago, I had a in-home client who they were selling and trading cards. And so we set up an entire shipping station for him so that he was, it was far more effective. So we had bins for all the shipping, um, envelopes, we had all of the mail trackers, we had all of those things compiled together and so we made a shipping station. So we grouped a lot of things that we might have grouped differently because of how he used those items. So think about how you use them. Doesn't always make sense to store stamps over here and envelopes over here. If you are selling and mailing things frequently, maybe create a shipping station, maybe put on a cart, maybe store it all together in a bin, something to keep it all together. It doesn't have to be so broad and keeping things all segmented. If it works better for you to store in one area, put it all together and come up with a creative label for how you use it, like a shipping center. Now, those miscellaneous items, we're gonna cover those because there are always miscellaneous items. We have glass vases, you have random like blankets and throw pillows, holiday decor. All of those things need to be stored in some way that makes sense to you, but they don't always fit nicely into some of the categories we've listed earlier. So in order to really combat the you know, oh, I'm just gonna dump it all in a bin and call it miscellaneous. Think about how you use them. If you use your vases in the kitchen, then create a spot for them in your kitchen. That's now a kitchen category, vases. If you have holiday decor and you want to break it up over many different bins so that you can pull out that bin to decorate for the holiday, that is great. Maybe you have craft supplies. You can organize all the craft supplies based on how you use them or what they are. Just think about you and what makes sense to you. And again, I am breaking down all of these categories on the blog because there are just so many that I think this video might be like five hours if I went through every single category. So this is just a little snippet of some categories, how to rethink and reframe your mindset when you hear the word organizing categories. So if you need more suggestions, go check out the blog, but my biggest advice to you is to just take action. Don't overthink it because they are just categories and it's gonna make sense to you in your home. So group things together based on how you use them and then give them a general category. Why can't you call all your hair care products hair? Why can't you group all of your nail polish and cuticles and cutters and everything and just call it nails? It doesn't have to be overthought. You can group things just based on meal prep. And those are all the seasonings, the spices, everything like that. It doesn't have to be overthought by grouping based on category. Make it work for you and that is all that matters. Love what you see? Don't forget to subscribe. New videos every Wednesday.